album artwork, a fundamental part of the musical package that sometimes doesn't get enough credit. Well, here's the third volume of And Justice for Art to remind you of the importance of the album artwork. This video was made possible by the book's author, Ramon Oscuro Martos, who was kind enough to send me a free copy to review. In each of these volumes are a few pages dedicated to different types of metal and hard rock album covers. Artists, photographers, band members, and all sorts of different representatives are interviewed to talk about the album artworks, how they were made, how they connect with the music, and people's reactions to them. Little details are pointed out, such as how the crosses on Ghost Perkel are a nod to Sepultura. That's one of my favorite artworks in the past several years, and I had no idea. Without revealing too much, here's a list of the album covers it discusses. It starts with the oldest and works its way to more recent years. The flow of artworks makes sense, too, with Holy Diver being talked about immediately after Mob Rules. It works because Dio is on your mind anyway. Then Megadeth is covered right after Metallica. For Peace Sells But Who's Buying, the artist Ed Repka is interviewed, as well as guitarist Chris Poland. It's good that they didn't interview Mustaine because then he'd be like, yeah, well, when I was thinking of artwork concepts, I wanted the red to represent the anger I felt when I got kicked out of Metallica. Then these airplanes bombing the United Nations building, that would have been what I wanted to do to the world after I got kicked out of Metallica. Did I mention I was in Metallica? When I jerk off, I do it with thoughts of Metallica! This also comes with a bookmark and is autographed. The print quality is excellent with strong paper and vibrant colors. It has to be with some of the stuff that it wants to show. Each section starts with the full artwork itself, the release date, artist name, the dimensions, and what media was used. The page formatting adapts with the different styles of artworks. So for rush moving pictures, it'll show a behind the scenes picture of the photo shoot, and it'll also give a brief history of the landmark building it was shot in front of. If the artist did more work for the band, a little bit of that is briefly shown as well. In the interviews, the artist will tell the symbolism and meanings behind the shots and what camera techniques they used. I even got to learn a little bit about art techniques like pointillism, as well as art styles throughout the centuries. The artists will say if any touch-ups were done or if anything was altered digitally. And if it's an older artwork that the band wanted to use, you get to learn how the artist got connected with the band. It'll show the original piece before modifications for the cover and rough sketches before the piece was final. As a bonus, there's even tidbits about band logos and band mascots when it's warranted. Derek Riggs Artist Studios circa 1986 is shown. The whole Somewhere in Time section is just a goldmine of trivia. I mean, look, there's Batman. Then you see the different arrangements on Morbid Angel's Covenant to work with different formats. Meanwhile, there's the alternate artwork for Nocturnus the Key before it ended up with what it ended up with. The conversations don't begin and end with the interviews, though. There's shout-outs to artist websites as well as their book collections. Reading this made me think of some of my favorite artworks and what I enjoy about them. It also gave me more appreciation as to what goes into making a good album cover, even with crude techniques like early Photoshop. One of my favorite chapters was on the Downward Spiral. Not only is it one of my favorite albums, but it's one of my favorite artworks as well. The meaning of the artwork and the unconventional approach to making it was just... Fascinating. Unsane's Blood Run interested me because the inner packaging connects with the front cover. It's a story in multiple parts. The story behind the artwork for Bell Witch's Mirror Reaper had me as floored as the album itself did, and this book did introduce me to a few cool bands I hadn't even heard of. I checked out Unsane, and that album's great. You can grab this limited edition press off the Injustice for Art website for $64. While you're there, you can also look into And Justice For Art Live for a similar book dedicated to live album covers. I would like to thank Ramon for giving me this book to review, and I would like to thank you for watching. So grind on.